Okay. okay. Imagining you have already put chlorine inside the water and producing hypochlorous acids. So what will hypochlorous acid do? Okay. So the first thing, if there is ammonia present in the water, that hypochlorous acid will be reacting with ammonia and forming monochloramine. Okay, basically, one hydrogen from ammonia is being substituted with that chlorine. You see, and that, that's why you have NH2 chlorine. And one, uh, the other H has been, you know, uh, combining with uh, OH from here and forming water. And this monochloramine can react with another hypochlorous acid. And this time around, one hydrogen from here will be substituted with one chlorine from that, forming dichloramine. Okay, and again, this dichloramine can react with another uh, hypochlorous acid, forming a nitrogen trichloride. Okay, it's supposed to be called nitrogen trichloride and not a uh, trichloramine. If in your notes or in your book says it's trichloramine, so that's probably not the right words to be used. The, the right word is nitrogen trichloride. Notice that I have different color that I'm labeling monochloramine, dichloramine, and nitrogen trichloride. I would like to say that monochloramine and also dichloramine also can disinfect water. Remember that we have hypochlorous acid just now, and also we have hypochlorite ion. Those two are free chlorine and that can disinfect water. These two also, monochloramine and dichloramine also can disinfect water. But nitrogen trichloride will not be able to disinfect water. Okay, And these two are called combined chlorine. Okay, combined chlorine. So again, if you like to rank, which one is the best disinfectant? Definitely the first one is hypochlorous acid. This thing, HOCl. The second one is hypochlorite ion minus OCl and followed by monochloramine and dichloramine. Okay, combined chlorine is not as good as the free chlorine. Okay, just look at the uh, proportion of chloramine uh, produced, okay? If you remember, and pH is so high, that means you are producing more hypochlorite ion. Therefore, it is quite natural to uh, obtain more chloramine, okay, compared to uh, dichloramine or even nitrogen trichloride. Okay, if the pH is between 4.5 to 8.5, so you will see in your water, you'll be able to see um, mostly monochloramine and also dichloramine. But if it's too acidic, that means we are producing so much amount of uh, hypochlorous acid. Therefore, you know, since we have so much amount of hypochlorous acid, definitely its reaction with ammonia will eventually be producing more nitrogen trichloride. Because of that, it will be saying more trichloride. More, I'm sorry, more nitrogen trichloride. Okay. So the proportion of chloramine also depends on temperature and definitely it depends on times as well, okay? Okay, so these are the ratio. If you have chlorine and ammonia one-to-one, -one, so you're producing chloramine. So if you have ratio of chlorine and ammonia to be three to two, so mostly it will turn to be, uh, you will be producing nitrogen gas. Okay, and that's the equation for production of nitrogen gas. I did mention to you that combined chlorine is less reactive, okay, compared to the uh, free chlorine. Right, so these are the facts affecting the process. So now, I probably want to highlight this part, okay? So chlorine can effectively kill bacteria. But for protozoa and viruses, it is more resistant to chlorine. And if you remember in the filtration topic, I did mention to you, if you have protozoa in your water, it should be removed at the filtration process. Okay, so filtration process can be a disinfectant for water. Okay, so it can get rid of protozoa and viruses.